Hello everyone, my name is Matthew and today I will be doing a brief tutorial on the Physics Platformer Kit from the Unity Asset Store. I am using Unity version 5.4.0 F3, but these steps should work on the latest version, which is currently 5.5.2. So our first step will be to quickly go through what is included with the Physics Platformer Kit. So this is a $25 asset package on the Unity Asset Store, $25 USD mind and it comes with a variety of things including prefabs for a player, a bunch of destructible boxes, a checkpoint, a goal which we'll be using, and water and some some other objects. It also comes with materials that we can use as well. In fact let's quickly do that. So let's quickly place down a uh, plane which we'll just scale up because it's a plane, we don't need to worry about uh, scaling in only one direction. In fact, let's actually quickly place this in zero, 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 just for simplicity's sake. Move the camera on over. And as you can see, for uh, the directional light, I've already adjusted to suit what I would like this level to look like. So to do that, you can just rotate it repositions the, the uh, sun for the time of day. So as I said, this kit comes with a bunch of materials, so let's quickly slap on this grass material right away. It looks decent. And another way you can create objects is to go up here, create an object. Let's quick place down some cubes. So these will be our platforms for our platformer. So just make them whatever size, doesn't really matter. And let's make a quick uh, empty object to make it easier to manipulate these later on, if need be. i to keep track of them. Drag that in, in there. And Unity allows you to quickly duplicate objects, so hit Control D. Just a number of times to you know quickly space out a few. You can see it's numbering them accordingly. You know, just rotate a few platforms. A little bit tilted there. And just vary the heights a bit. There we go. Extremely basic platforming. Or platforms, rather. So let's quickly slap on a brick material that also comes with the package. Don't worry about tiling or anything like that. You can adjust that later if you want to. To do so, you just go in here and adjust the tiling. For now, it looks fine. So we'll want to go back to the physics platformer kit and drag in the player prefab. This little yellow guy is the one that comes with the kit. You can replace his model with whatever one you'd like. But what's really important are all the scripts here. So as you can see, there is a movement script, a script that allows him to deal damage to enemies, character motor, which allows you to lock in his movement to side to side for a side scroller, which we won't be doing today, but I may address in a later video. And what you want to do is drag in the main camera to the main cam here and in the main camera go to the physics platformer kit again go to scripts and drag in the camera follow script just make sure that's selected and add that there and make sure you're targeting the player I know this works by itself I'm not sure if this is necessary but it is quite useful just making sure all of our bases are covered I highly recommend for this project to enable mouse free look Otherwise, the, uh, the uh, camera can be controlled with Q and E keys on the keyboard. So let's run this, just a quick test. So movement is controlled with the WASD keys. Spacebar is to jump, logically. So as you can see, we've already got a very basic platformer going. 
He's very happy about that. Now for more of a challenge, let's vary the heights a bit more. So it usually gets up here, but slightly harder. Really the only reason I was able to get up is because of a slight glitch with the edge of the collider there, which you can adjust. Let's put this slightly farther up and farther out. Now what happens? I'm sure you can guess. You can't get up there. Now, depending on the style of platformer you want, you may agree with that. You may think that's fair. You know, after all, people can't double jump. But for gameplay's sake, let's add in a little script that I found or made. I honestly don't remember where I got this. But it works very well here, and it did not come with the physics platformer kit. The double jump enabler. I'll provide a link below in the description to this script. The rest of the physics platformer kit you'll have to buy for 25 USD on the Unity Asset Store. I highly recommend it. It is very good. And please don't pirate it. Support the developer. So as I was saying, I'll add this double jump script to the player. Scroll down to an empty space. You can easily add a component this way through miss er sorry scripts. Then find it here. I prefer dragging and dropping, but that works too. So that's all it takes to make him able to double jump. By the way, to adjust him jumping immediately after starting the game, just adjust his uh, height or where he's placed on the map. So gets up to this platform just fine. Oh no, you can't get up there. But with that script we just added, again he hit the edge of it, so that's why it sounded like it jumped thrice, but double jump. Perfect. So we have a basic platformer with literally just platforming. Let's add in a bit more challenge. So let's put in another cube. This time... No, let's leave it down here. This time... It'll be a bit bigger. It'll be below the other ones. So if you fall... Just shrink that down a bit. So if you fall onto this area, you'll take damage. Now to do this, you want to drag on the hazard script. And to alert the player, we'll drag on the hazard mat. As you might have guessed, that's just the material for the hazard. These are other materials for the character, the skybox, which I'm just using a default one right now. And as I've already pointed out to the environment. So go into the hazard script, which automatically adds the deal damage script as well. And adjust these to your heart's content. And we'll want to also look at the health script for the player. So you can adjust it so the player takes impact damage. So if objects are thrown at him, then you'll be hit and damaged accordingly. Or only if other rigid bodies, which the player has on him, collide. You can also toggle on and off respawn, which for these for this demo I'm going to leave it on. Look at him all excited. So let's jump as usual and oh no. I'm taking damage. So right now, there isn't a visible health bar on the screen. And for this tutorial, I'm not going to add one. Instead, let us look at what amount of health the player has and how much damage this hazard does.
so it'll be a one-hit kill if you land on it. As the level is relatively small, we don't need to worry about the player having to go all the way back from the beginning. So the beginning is basically the whole level. So the player has 15 health. The hazard does only one damage per hit. So let's adjust that to 15. Or you can go over the player's health. That'll be overkill, but it'll guarantee that he dies. So, instantly dead. You'll also note that when I got hit and I died, I got pushed. Which can send the player flying over the edge. So to avoid that, let's click back on the hazard, go back down to the script, and set the push force to zero. You may also adjust the push height so he doesn't go flying upwards. Which isn't a big deal. Let's the player know that they've been hit and they fall down from wherever they respond. Now obviously if this were a proper level I would recommend doing a uh, cube instead of a plane so the player can't do that and make it look like they're floating in the air. But for now this is fine. So the player can jump up some relatively simple platforms, dive from a hazard, which you can replace the model with whatever you'd like. There are some simple AI characters that I may show off. So now what? Well, let's just quickly save this. Make sure to always save whenever you make a major change that you wouldn't want to repeat. So the, pla the physics platformer kit comes with a prefab called Goal over here. Uh, it's just a bit big. Or actually it's just really close to the camera. So let's quickly drag that down. There are other ways of quickly aligning an object, but for now I'll just stick to the tried and true method of dragging it around. Maybe sinking in a tiny bit. Put it on the edge there. So right now what happens if I just drag in the goal? You may have already noticed some scripts on the side, some variables. So right now, all that happens is the player gets pushed up a little bit. You can use the goal prefab as a sort of So in addition to setting the player flying up, which you can also use to emulate a sort of man cannon or gravity lift, the goal, there's a little particle system that floats upward, the goal script has a le next level index and a load delay, the lift amount being obviously what sends you flying. So what we want to do is we want to create a scene that we can then put in the next level index to show that the player has won. So a quick way to do that, let us save first. First we want to make sure there aren't any other scenes that are here. So just delete any other ones that may be there. Make sure to add open scenes, that's the one that you're currently in. And close that. So let's create a new scene. Completely blank, no big deal. Let's put this in 2D to be very quick about it. So right click here or go at the game, game object at the top. 3D object and 3D text. You, can, you may also put in a UI with a canvas and text. The 3D text is probably the fastest way. Actually, let's do that. Three D text is actually quite useful for tu for creating in-game tutorials around the world, but I take it back. This is actually faster. So just a very simple message for the player. Crank that font size. See how that looks in game. And you can easily drag this around to 
position it how you'd like. <laughs> Doesn't like being placed on canvas, go figure. Alright, so we'll quickly save out that scene. Ignore that error, because it'll be gone when we play it again. Now go back to wherever you saved your scenes. Disable duty. If you ended up all the way out here like I did, just select anything in your hierarchy and hit F to quickly zoom in on it. Now click on the goal. And where it says next, level index. So that's what's in your build settings here. My apologies, let's go back to the wind scene. Go back to build settings. Add open scene. So we'll return to the test scene. Click on the goal. We want next level index to be 1, or if you have multiple levels in your game, whatever your windscreen is. If you have a windscreen, or you can script it so that text will appear above the player, or in front of them, or music will sound you know, letting them know that they've won. But that's beyond the uh, scope of this tutorial. So now, when the player enters the goal zone, it gets to a certain point. Congratulations, you've won. So we've covered how to quickly import, or rather use an already imported asset package. It's very straightforward on the Unity Store. Just make sure you purchase this package, this physics platformer kit, and then in your downloads window that Unity will bring you to, there will be an import button. It gets placed in your assets folder as it is here. Then all you have to do is drag prefabs and create models and slap on materials. So, a very simple 3D platformer. I hope you enjoyed.